the 90th granddaddy of them all, and it features two of the country's highest scoring offenses. In a season of twists and turns, the Badgers were two Hail Marys away from a possible shot at the BCS national title game. Their offense depends on getting the ball rolling. Meanwhile, Oregon lighting up the scoreboard at a near school record pace again this season. Can the Michael James and company break through in the big game this year and get the monkey off Chip Kelly's back? What are the keys to victory on both sides of the football? We'll break it down with some former Ducks on scene in Pasadena. Plus, we'll count down another year of jaw-dropping moments and our plays of the year. It's all coming up on this one-hour Return of the Roses special, and it's on the air right now. Will the 98th Rose Bowl be a shootout, or will two capable defenses stand up to challenge those two prolific offenses? We'll delve into those questions and others over the next hour. Welcome to Return of the Roses. I'm Nick Krupke. Before we check in with our crew in Pasadena, we say hello to the human booster seat here, <laughs> Phil Milani. And, Phil, you know, last year we were here talking about the show in Glendale. It's supposed to be an offensive showcase between the Ducks and Badger, or Ducks and Auburn Tigers, but, of course, that offensive uh, showcase we thought we were going to get never materialized for the Ducks. Yeah, not really. Just 22-19 to 19 was that final in that game. And as we might talk about later in the show, the defenses seem like they do have a bit of an advantage in that game. Yeah, we've talked about that uh, all week long during the newscast, too, about uh, how much of a layoff time does that really help the opponent uh, play the Ducks. Chip Kelly said it means nothing. The yeah. players maybe said, yeah, I think a little bit more uh, time off to prepare for us is better. For Oregon, they just want to be at a Rose Bowl and win one. Carson York, now third uh, BCS game. I don't want a runners-up ring anymore. We want the real thing, so we'll get right to it now. And kick it to our guys in Pasadena. That's what you all want. You want our team in Pasadena. <laughs> yeah, they've been waiting four weeks since beating UCLA, the inaugural Pac-12 title game, and now should be ready to face Wisconsin. Let's go live now to Pasadena KBL Sports Director Tom Ward and Dirk Weissar have been with the Ducks and Badgers all week. Two teams guys looking to finally bring home that W in the big game. Well, certainly, and it's been all the talk this week about two teams that uh, really desperately want this game, Dirk. Uh, for Wisconsin, I mean, they need a win. Brett Bielema, two and three in bowl games. But for Chip Kelly and the Ducks, Chip Kelly 0-2 in bowl games. The Ducks need this win. That's right, and the 0-2 losses are in BCS bowl games. Brett Bielan, as you said, talked about it in today's head coach's press conference. He wants desperately to get back up to 500 in bowls to go 3-3 three three overall. Well, certainly both teams uh, with no shortage of desire in this game. They both feature great quarterbacks, both feature great running backs. Mm -hmm. Wisconsin has that big offensive line, right. and it figures to be an entertaining matchup. And let's go now to our tail of the tape as we look at the matchup between these two teams. And the offensive numbers are surprisingly equal. 600 points on the season for Oregon, just over 46 points per game. 580 points for the Badgers, 44 and a half points per game. Oregon gave up more points. The Badgers held opponents to 17 points per game on average. The Ducks just over 23. The total offense number, Oregon nearly 6,700 yards on the season, 515 yards per game. Wisconsin at 466 yards per game. The turnover margin, Wisconsin fourth in the nation, but that sack number. Oregon has sacked the quarterback 20 more times than the Badgers, and the Ducks were among the leaders in the nation, allowing Darren Thomas to be sacked just 12 times. It all sets up what should be an entertaining 98th Rose Bowl. On paper, this one looks like it could be the first team to 50 wins. But looks can be deceiving. All I know is last year all we heard was how Auburn in Oregon, we're going to go up and down the field, and that was last year, and every year is different. Uh, that didn't quite happen. The Oregon offense usually has its way with opposing defenses, and Wisconsin did give up 39 points in the Big Ten title game. Meanwhile, the Badgers can light it up as well as they join the Ducks in topping the 80 touchdown mark this season. As a coach, you're extremely fortunate to be able to coach good players, and um, I think the thing that they're obviously talented, you know, we've got a lot of talent up front, but the thing that people don't see is, is how they approach the game, you know, their, their work ethic both on the field and off the field. And, and really, you know, there's nothing magical about the schemes that we do. It's, it's these players. Both teams feature fairly accomplished dual threat quarterbacks that can run. Russell Wilson had a quarterback efficiency rating of 191 plus and threw just three interceptions all season long. That in addition to running for five scores. It makes it a little more difficult when you got somebody that's a dual threat 
But, uh, you know, like I said, we faced them for the last past few years, and we played many good quarterbacks throughout the Pac-12. So, you know, we're looking forward to the challenge. Darren Thomas, meanwhile, did not look to run as much this year, but directed Oregon's offense to 536 yards per game, fourth best in the country. DT had an efficiency rating of 155 and threw just six interceptions against 30 passing touchdowns. Their plays, they don't really allow him to get, get touched, and when teams do get a free shot, he's so athletic, he can avoid it. Um, so I think you're gonna have to just be on your on your keys the whole game. Um, you know, he, he does a great job with their play fakes, and he's perfect for that scheme. So uh, we need to focus on our keys and take care of our responsibilities because he could hurt you if you don't. If there's one number that really stands out in the matchup, though, it's Oregon's 43 quarterback sacks, and the Badgers know that stat could be a game changer. It didn't take you long to watch the film to realize they've got that combination of a good scheme with good players executing that scheme. Now, one comparison to look at this year, the Ducks and Badgers both played the Beavers this season. As we take a look at the common opponent comparison, it might not give true measure due to the fact that Oregon State got better as the year went along, but the Badgers shut out the Beavers in week two while Oregon won the Civil War by 28. Now, Oregon racked up over 600 yards against the Beavers and went 7 of 14 on third down, while Wisconsin managed 397 yards and went 8 of 15 on third down. But the Badger D did pitch the shutout one of the reasons why Wisconsin is here this year. Well, certainly the Badger defense in all but three games this season held their opponent to 17 points or less. Of course, the two losses where they lost on two Hail Marys and, of course, that Big Ten title game. And let's be honest, they went up against a very efficient Kirk Cousins-led offense in Michigan State. Michigan State, good offense. Oregon, a good offense. Ducks making their second trip to Pasadena in three years. Wisconsin on the other side making their second straight appearance in the Rose Bowl. And even though the Wisconsin Badgers suffered a pair of back-to-back -back losses midway through the season, they somehow held everything together. The Badgers were having a ball in 2011, at least through the first six games of the regular season. In those six contests, Wisconsin outscored its opponents 301 to 58 behind the offensive firepower of tailback Monty Ball and quarterback Russell Wilson, who came to Madison from North Carolina State. That's the biggest challenge I probably had is trying to get to know each person and you know get to figure out their names. First of all, I'm not very good with names, so <laughs> I had to uh, learn people's names and all that. But that, that was probably the biggest challenge. These guys welcomed me in completely. There weren't too many defenses that challenged Ball, who has scored 38 touchdowns, one shy of Barry Sanders' NCAA single season record. You know, if it happens, I'm looking forward to you know, getting that job done because it's, it's, a, it's a huge award for the entire offense because you know, they'll be able to say that you know, they blocked for the running back that broke the record. But the Badgers came down to earth on October 22nd in a last-second loss at Michigan State. Michigan the following week at Ohio State, it happened again. The fact is, we just didn't uh, do enough across the board to win those games, but never was it anything to me that, that shook our confidence. Even though there were difficult times, I don't think anyone on the team really wavered. We all just wanted to stick to our plan and keep going, and I mean, it was unfortunate how it happened, but no one ever wavered, and we just wanted to keep going forward. The Badgers did bounce back in a big way and reeled off five straight wins, including a 42-39 victory over Michigan State in the Big Ten Championship. Our leaders and captains of the team did a great job of rallying us together after one of our team meetings and talking to us and basically, you know, not yelling or anything like that, but they just told us, like, hey, you know, the only direction that, you know, us leaders are going to take this program is, is the right direction. They believe in each other. Uh, they stayed the course. Uh, didn't waver one bit. It actually made us stronger. Uh, we came out of those two losses. It hurt, but it made us stronger in the end, and uh, that's why we're here. Let's look back now on the Badgers' season. It began with a blowout win of UNLV. The shutout of the Beavers followed by a 49-7 win over Northern Illinois. South Dakota went to Madison and got rolled up 59-10. The Badgers beat up on the Cornhuskers on October 1st, then took care of Indiana at home in another easy victory. Then things went awry for Wisconsin in the span of seven days. After losing on a Hail Mary to Michigan State, the Badgers lost 
In similar fashion, the next week in Columbus, they got things back together and rallied for big wins over Purdue and then Minnesota. They beat the Illini in Champaign, then rolled over Penn State 45-7. They then clinched the Rose Bowl berth with a clutch win over the Spartans in that Big Ten title game. And a lot is made in this offense of Monty Ball and Russell Wilson, but on mm -hmm. the outside, the receivers, Nick Toon, and then the guy who's a little bit forgotten in Jared Aberderis, number right. four, who Toon had 55 catches, Aberderis had 51, Toon had nine touchdowns, Aberderis had seven in really an offense that they run the ball a lot and they have to spread it around. Great compliments to each other. Play action is going to work with Monty Ball in that backfield. Those two guys take advantage of that. And certainly a lot of native Wisconsin mm -hmm. guys on this team. At the center of that, Peter Kahn's the center who we've yeah. dealt with this week and a very infectious, kind of funny guy yeah. as far as uh, just his whole personality. Right, a great laugh. He interviewed one of his uh, uh, fellow line mates at the media day, and that was a fun time for everyone. Well, we are just getting started on this one hour return to the Roses special from Pasadena. Still to come, the 98th Rose Bowl is a matchup of two of the nation's premier running backs. We will break it down. Plus, it's been an eventful week for the two teams here in Southern California. We'll let you in along for the ride as the Ducks and Badgers had a little fun this week, and as always, lots more Rose Bowl coverage online all the time at our website, InsideThePack.com. We are back after this.